all of you all have had an offline and an online touch point with the same consumer right how do you blend that in user experience or do you build each of them in silo and then some things come together so how do you think of offline versus online coming together in a product yeah in swiggy though uh long time we realized that there is always some dissonance between the offline and the online mm. that's because how the marketing activities get planned right sometimes it's always product hypothesizing first and then marketing right. coming and trying to tell a story and there's always some dissonance uh, in translation in terms of what a product creator wants and like you know how it eventually reaches the market i think somewhere around 2018 19 harsha was very clear that folks we are in the convenience business mm we can't keep doing this stuff it these are not two disparate items right we need to now move into something what he started calling product marketing which is now even more yeah uh, this thing right so in 2018 19 i think swiggy swiggy quickly moved into what we call a product marketing process where starting from how the product proposition is right like you know like you know value prop how a product gets branded to pro to how the product gets communicated right like you know in terms of what the product experience is what are the product properties are to eventually how the product gets distributed everything started as a full chain of events and who who commands this decision is it product or marketing so yeah so this is where i think a very important product element came into picture i think anuj introduced this to the company which he started calling it pr faq this is a very famous process that amazon follows follows in the product design or product development process which is you start with a pr fact right it's a two pager of key questions of what you want the customer to understand about your product it's right? called pr faq pr faq mm. which is pretty much saying that okay in one and a half years time we're going to release this product yeah. what are the important factual information that we want customers to know about our product okay so that you start even before you do a product mm. right so this is a classic product marketing example right where you say i'm hypothesizing that now consumers are find a certain section of consumers certain segments of consumers coming in from certain towns they have this need state and they can't go ahead and they don't have time to browse like 100 restaurants to simply have a sim- homemade meal right like you know yeah. so what is this product then right like you know mm. so we are now starting to say okay if consumers have to hear about this product one and a half years from later they need to basically say, we need to be very clear in our head what are we building so this pr if you starts by saying this is what the product should be right like the vision of the product gets laid out this is what the consumer should exactly hear this is your whole product or a part of feature a part of a product or a whole product depends on what okay. the, the you know the velocity of the product is so it starts by saying like you know shriya doesn't have time she is like you know pretty much an office goer every day right like or probably she is working from home she is managing multiple hats she doesn't have the time in between office meetings to basically yeah. order something for her kids so what she does is she pretty much opens up a product named swiggy pop right mm. which gives us which gives her some 15 20 meals like kids meals or something which comes out of the box and this is how she will interact with the product so this is a pr fq that begins with which sets the tone in terms of what the product discovery process is right so then we go into something which is to say okay if if shriya as a user is like this and she has this need state and she doesn't have stressed by time so this product experience should be designed in such a way so it starts with user stories right then why should shriya shriya care about this product right like you know it starts by saying okay this is how we introduce the product to the person these are the important fundamentals of the product experience that we need to tell that this, you are the right user for this product these are the right fundamentals of this product try this product right like how do you introduce it which yeah. is what we call product marketing right and then when they get into the product how do we explain the features of this okay this is just one click experience i'm just making yeah. it up right there's no yeah. there was a product called swiggy pop that existed yeah. which is already yeah. very close to my heart we shut it down <laughs> so i'm just using that as an example please don't quote me on that that doesn't exist in the app anymore but it was a good feature yeah it was a very good yeah, yeah. feature damn good feature in the sense the hypothesis was so true right like you know that an average checkout so for some context swiggy pop is a single click ordering experience right so you don't get the whole world of swiggy right like this is what time stressed people who don't have time right like you know they get to see 25 items 25 to 30 items around them this is usually like you know from very popular brands like you know a biryani place or like a burger place like truffles or something like that curated and in one time they're able to buy average checkout time was 
less than one and a half minutes. So, just going one level deeper, how do you, and this is away from, we come back to this particular question, how do you decide that the product has to be shut down? Like, this feature will not work anymore. Right, so there are, there are only two clear uh, reasons for it, right? One, the, the product didn't do the job the customer wanted it to be done, which is the JTBD was wrong, which is either a hypothesis is wrong what or was the customer. Wrong? So, JTBD is a very, very common thing right now in the product mm. culture. So, a product gets hired by a customer, mm. right? So, there is a job that needs to be done mm. by a product to the customer. Yeah. If it doesn't do the job, customer fires them. Mm. That's it. As simple as that. Mm. Which translates to whether customers will have the app in your phone, will they even have, they will continue to have the app in the phone but they may not continue to use the feature right. in the phone right. Right, or in the app, sorry, right. Right, or in the app. Right. So it's pretty much, if a product doesn't do the job that it's set out to do for the customer, right? maybe it is because it is not priced right or maybe the assortment is wrong or maybe it targeted the wrong consumers, etc. Right? So that could be one of the reasons. Second could be economics of it, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, in the sense that there's a, there's an MVP which is very easy to make these days because like you, you tend to optimize things uh, for the but customer The product experience. demands a lot. But the product demands a lot, right? Yeah. Like, you know, there's a certain economics at play for the business to make the consumer experience work. For example, to make a delivery work, there is a cost that we need, the company needs to pay. And there is a certain amount of delivery charge that we can absorb for that experience. And which, ha which has to be in the viable, in the, it has to be in the Goldilocks zone, right? If it doesn't, and if it, in, if you continue to see like losses coming in from that, then Pretty much what it means that it's a very good product, but unfortunately, there's no meaning for the business, right? Because yeah. you continue to not make money through that. So these are the only two reasons, right? Like, you know, for maybe shutting down a feature or a, business, uh, or a product. Interesting. Shreya, how do you maintain consistency between offline versus online? Where, what, what's, where, where does it start with? So I think first, what he talked about, right? Whether this PR FAQ or this is exactly what I did yesterday, by the way. It's an example from yesterday that we are putting together this entire product called Community for Cult, right? We already have it in mm. very organic ways. Now, how do we actually productize it? So I wrote a story that two years from now, when Arun will join Cult in the center called Marathalli, what will his day look like? What happens on day one? What happens when he enters, exits, opens the app, etc.? You'll have to write that story and that entire story actually helped this entire team to think of, okay, so what are the right strategic calls that we need to take? We want this entire thing to come to life. To be able to first imagine the journey from a user story standpoint and get, carry that story out actually like a story, put a narrative out. Once you have a narrative, now larger product strategic decisions are taken. So, okay, we will build an on-app so-and-so-and-so community, etc., etc. On the floor, these, will th these things will happen. But the main job of designer or product manager and designer now comes where we say, okay, for our journey starts on when somebody buys a membership, this thing happens. This person is feeling this at this moment. What happens next? You craft and the journey will go up and down. Journey will go up from outside the digital world, entering into the physical world, and then saying, ye hua, trainer ne aapko ek cheez boli, and then you had to actually check it out on the app. So that Digital journey is like the most important thing before you get down to any other hmm. task. Yeah. UI, interface, all of that does not yes. matter if you don't have this journey right. Because if this journey mein aapke assumptions wrong ho gaya, you didn't think of the scenario at all. This journey helps you visualize all possible scenarios through which a user can go. Right. For which you have designed something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that has become our protocol of working at Cal that have you actually thought of this journey through and through? And, and how presumptuous could you get with that journey because it perhaps doesn't exist in reality today. So this is where, so our first question, right? Have we observed enough? Have right. we observed that hey, when we said that community in some sense already exists, have we learned Not. about how people are interacting exactly. in the first place? Have we observed enough, spoken enough, gotten enough insight to now actually come to even this room and say, what do we do? So the first PR FAQ Bandratha was based on very strong insight and hypothesis that you have validated somehow. Right. And because of this entire validation and conviction, you've put together a story. Right. So this is all step by step. Create one catch 
an insight. You catch an insight by doing all of that first. Based on an insight, you actually say that if I have a community, then what is the community? Kya hai? You have to actually put together a vision for the people. And that then vision breaks down into product strategies, yeah, then break it down into user journeys. Right. Interesting. But if you don't have all these touch points, right, it is, you, the, you, it ha you have to be prepared sometimes, right? Like, you know, it, Swiggy is like a three-way marketplace, which mm. makes it even worse, yeah. right? Like, you know, there's at least, if you have control over certain parts of the uh, customer experience, it's fine, right? But once we get an order, when we place it, we don't even know what's going to happen in the yeah. restaurant yeah. side of things or in, in the, the or in the partner yeah. side of things. So in a three-way marketplace, it becomes even more essential to have, to, to, to sort of envision this, uh, product experience across all of these touch points. So anything that goes wrong will go wrong. So and we have narratives, we have explana explanations for the user to cover all of these bases, right? So customer also understands that okay, what am I getting into, right? So this is a product which is coming from this place, and it moves hands like this, and then eventually it, it will reach me, right? So that's very important. The narrative is going to be very important for the customer to make a choice: will they even go ahead with the order or not? Right. In Dunzo, we always have problem. Well, it's not a problem. I mean, people love going to the shop and uh, buy something because right. un unless they are in an urgency. Right. Yeah, right. So they love going to their uh, daily dukan mm. and having that conversation. That's one side of things. Second thing is that people love touching and feeling and everything. Un I mean, for fresh vegetables and fruits as especially, right? For packaged food, I mean, they don't have to, it's, it's a no-brainer. They can just order it. But they still love to go to a store and see if there is a sachet packet of a new product which is coming. So this problem was always being there. Uh, the reason why, because we were also doing food for some time, right? right. So uh, we realized that, you know, people uh, love celebrating food, like going to the uh, restaurant, that whole preparation of getting ready and going to the restaurant, sitting there, ordering. And while the food is getting prepared, there's a conversation happening. So. So this problem, I, I, what's your view on this? Like, is it even a problem or people uh, put this in two compartments that, okay, food needs to be celebrated and sometimes... Yeah, see, I think uh, there's, there, was a, there was a time when I think food has always been very cultural, mm, right? It yeah. brings people together, it enables conversations, etc. We, for a long time, thought it's um, purely for occasions, mm. right? When people meet in a social setup or something, that's when food ordering pattern happens, right? What we've seen is now, like, there is a shift in the behavior, right? Like, you know, I think food has also now become, like, food tourism has become a very <laughs> important thing, right? Yeah, like, you right. know, so I don't think it is very occasion-based anymore, right? There are various guilt trips that people go into without having any occasion, right? So. I don't know, right? Like, you know, I think it is still evolving in our heads, right? Like, you know, it's very funny to say this after eight years of food ordering. <laughs> but then we, we, we strongly believe that there are many need states which are just getting yeah. unlocked. Like, occasion yeah. is just one of the need states, mm. yeah. right? Like, the functional need states like different boxes that, mm. that is yet to be even solved that Mumbai, yeah. uh, you yeah, know, power. has solved for. We don't yeah. know, right? Like, you know, so that's a need state that we need to solve for. There is home food that we need to solve for. Mm. There are many, many need states that I think it is now coming out apart from just occasions. Yeah. But occasions still continue to remain a very important part. That offline world yeah. still exists. Yeah, the, it still exists because dressing up, going out together and having fun, nothing yeah. uh, sort of replaces that. But there is a place for that. Yeah. Consumption has moved definitely to more convenience than just occasions. Yeah. Interesting.